So today we're still in the Easter season, and the scripture lesson comes from Luke's Gospel in the 24th chapter, a story of the first Easter Sunday. On that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. And one of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are, are you the only person in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since these things happened. And in addition, some women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning. But they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things, and then enter his glory and begin with Moses and all the prophets. He explained to them what was in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over, and so he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up, and they returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together. And they were saying, it's true, the Lord has risen and he's appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened to them on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. flashes of light 
at the side of my vision. Now, of course, it happened uh, late on a Friday, and I called the eye doctor, and they said, okay, come in on Monday. Thanks, Doc, thanks. And at the eye doctors on Monday, they did all the great stuff they like to do, drops in your eyes and bright lights flashing and all that. And at the end, the doctor said, well, this is normal. You're getting old. <laughs> now, it was reassuring to hear the doctor say that it was normal because there was a big weight off my shoulders. But afterwards, when I thought about it, I thought, you know, Doc, this was not normal at all. I've never had this happen to me before. And when you start to see flashes of light at the corner of your eye, it doesn't feel normal, and you don't know what's going on, and you think, what did I do to cause this? Well, this getting older stuff, it's not for sissies. It's like suddenly the trap door opens, and the bottom falls out, and you don't know what's going on, and then the doctor says, it's normal. You're getting old. Well, recently I was in the hospital talking with someone about grief. And there's another time when the bottom falls out, is when we lose a loved one. In an instant, everything is changed. And we're overwhelmed with thoughts and feelings, some of which we've never had before. And then someone says, well, this is normal. You're going through the stages of grief. Okay, yes, it's normal. And there are stages, and, and because we're people, that's what we go through. But it's also not normal. Normal is having the person with us. Normal is thinking that we have a future here. Normal is not this aching loss and this burning anger and this black chasm that separates us from the one that we love. And it's normal to be thinking, so how come I'm so tired? Why am I snapping at people? Why can't I concentrate now? I don't feel like myself. That's not normal. And friends, I think the same thing is happening to churches in our day. The mainstream churches, the United Methodist churches and others like them, we're struggling. We're seeing a loss of membership and attendance. And people say, well, it's happening everywhere. It's normal. No, it's not normal. It is happening everywhere. But it's not what we're used to. It's not what we wanted. It's a change and it's not a welcome one. And we all scratch our heads and we think, what did we do to cause this? How, how did we miss the boat? What did we do wrong? H how are we off base? Let me suggest this morning that we're not off base and we didn't cause this, but we are hoping for something that only God can provide. Those two disciples were on the road to Emmaus and they were caught up in their grief. I can't not imagine that it was an easy thing to see Jesus torture and to see him die. And they tell the stranger, the one who they think is the stranger who walks with them, they tell him, we were hoping that he would redeem Israel. We were hoping that he would set us free. And I wonder if they weren't asking the same kind of questions that we ask. What did we do wrong that Jesus died? How, how did we miss the boat that he ended up being arrested and killed? What should we have done 
so that he could have set Israel free. And they were right, I think, to hope that Israel would be set free. But you see, the way that God was setting the people free, the way that God was redeeming them was outside of their understanding and their comprehension. What God was doing was something far different from their normal lives and their normal thoughts. God was doing a new thing. Something only God could conceive of. And the resurrection that they came to know that day, the, the resurrection that we celebrate on Sunday, is not the same old life fixed up a little bit. Jesus came and was with them in a new kind of life. A heavenly life. And He invites us to live that life with Him. The, the resurrection is not just for after we die on this earth and then join Jesus in heaven. The, the testimony of the Scriptures is that in Christ, we are new. In Christ, we live a new kind of life. <clears throat> and yet there were those disciples on the road in the midst of their grief and loss. And they didn't know how to find Jesus. They couldn't even recognize Him. And that's normal. Because they had never experienced anything like that before. And beloved, isn't it true of us that when the bottom falls out, sometimes we don't know how to find Him because we've never experienced that before? But here's part of the resurrection. Here's part of the new normal. Jesus finds them. And beloved, He will come and He will find us too. In the most painful circumstances in our lives, when we're frightened, when we're burdened, when we're worn out, Jesus is coming to find us. And we may not recognize Him at first. He may not bring what we were hoping for. But He will offer us that broken bread that gives life. He, he will offer us that forgiveness that sets us free. He will fill us with His Spirit so that we can love others in His name. As a church, we're, we're in a time of change. So you folks here in the port, it's not just saying goodbye to one pastor and beginning to welcome another one that you haven't even seen and barely know. But I think all of us in the church now were saying goodbye to those days when the church was really, really popular and everybody wanted to come. We, we live in a time when not many people are interested in church. People have other priorities. And like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we're saying we had been hoping that Jesus would bring more people we had been hoping that He would fill us up like He used to on Sunday. We've been hoping for that normal that we know. And I don't think we're wrong to be hoping for this. I don't think we're wrong to trust that we have something powerful from God to share with other people. But I, I just wonder in our day if God isn't doing something new if He isn't bringing us a resurrection that we could not be ready for, that we could not conceive of. 
those disciples on the road to Emmaus experienced a new kind of life. Instead of the pressure to fix everything, instead of guilt for our failures, the resurrection life is forgiveness and freedom. Instead of control, that's the old life. Now there's trust. Instead of the weight of everything being on our shoulders, instead there's walking with Christ and learning from Him. Instead of blaming and judging other people, there's grace that values and loves our neighbor. Instead of trying to show that we're better than others and they should serve us, instead we live in humility and in fellowship and we serve others. We, we no longer try to beat other people into shape and we no longer have to put up with other people trying to beat us into shape. When Jesus resurrects us into new life, Life is no longer about fixing ourselves. Life is about trusting God and letting the Spirit give us unending love. God's love for us and God's love for others. Think for just a minute about what it's like for a baby before the baby is born. All of a sudden, there's this squeezing. And it's not comfortable. This, this womb has been a safe and warm place to grow, and now all of a sudden, it's not. And how can that infant possibly understand what's going to happen? That baby's never breathed air. And yet that child is about to come into the world and take their first breath. That baby has never seen anything, just the darkness of the womb. And now that child is about to come into the world and see mom and dad's faces in all the wonderful light and color of this world. But the baby doesn't know anything of that. All the baby knows is that it doesn't feel good right now and that there's something being lost. There's closeness to mom being lost. There's warmth and the safe embrace of the womb being lost. There's being fed by mom's blood supply being lost. And this baby is being born into a world where this child will be cold and hungry and bombarded by air and sight and sound, and it doesn't seem like a very good deal. Well, then we're in the midst of change. But God has not broken His promise to us. God has not forsaken us and moved away. God has not found us wanting and given up on us. God loves you. God loves Laporte United Methodist Church. And if we are on the road, and if sometimes we're discouraged, like those two disciples were discouraged, then perhaps we are ready, like they were, to invite Jesus in to invite Him to abide with us, to stay with us, and to receive a new kind of life from His Spirit. Beloved, Jesus is coming to be Lord of your lives in a new way. Jesus is coming to be Lord of this church in a new way. And we can trust that when the safe and familiar disappears and things are not normal, we can trust when we feel discouraged and don't see answers to our prayers, 
we can trust that Jesus is coming. And he's going to be faithfully in our midst and speak faithfully to our hearts. We can trust that he is bringing us forgiveness. He is making us new.